Tire power assembly weighs 440 pounds with fork rod and 395 pounds with a blade rod. Ensure lifting devices are rated to accommodate these weights. Removing the power assembly as a unit. Begin power assembly removal by removing the top deck cover to access the power assembly. Note, open the front latches first, then open the rear latches. Take care to avoid damage to the seal when handling the cover. Remove all handhold covers from the air box and the oil pan. A 5 8 inch socket and ratchet is required for the air box handhold cover located by the starters and may be required if a hand wheel is damaged or overly tightened. Remove the four bolts securing the piston cooling oil pipe. Place the pipe and the bolts in a container designated for reapplication. At the power assembly to be replaced using a suitable ratchet and extension, remove the two bolts securing the water inlet tube to the liner and the four saddle strap nuts holding the tube to the water manifold. Place the tube and bolts in the designated container. Remove and discard the water manifold gasket. Use a small scraper or fine emery paper to remove any remaining pieces of gasket. Take care to avoid damage to the water manifold that could result in a leak. Using an EMD test valve wrench, part number 8032587, open all engine test valves enabling the engine to be barred over. To prevent head or test valve damage, the entire test valve assembly of the affected cylinder must be removed. Remove and discard the seal. Place the test valve assembly into the designated container. If the affected assembly contains a fork rod, note the top dead center position of the cylinder number of the power assembly to be replaced. If the affected assembly contains a blade rod, note the top dead center position of that power assembly's corresponding fork rod assembly. Manually bar the engine in the normal direction of rotation until the noted fork rod piston assembly is approximately 120 degrees after top dead center. This enables removal of the three lower basket bolts. Additional barring may be required to enable access and removal of the upper basket bolts from this crank pin position. Remove the injector and rocker arm assembly from the power assembly. Also, the injector and rocker arm assembly must be removed from the opposing power assembly. This is necessary to enable pinning the piston for power assembly removal or access and to later replace the bearing shell. Disconnect the rocker arm oil supply line at the camshaft bearing block of both power assemblies. Remove and discard the old gasket once the rocker arm assemblies are lifted from the engine. Loosen the exhaust valve rocker arms and the injector rocker arm lock nuts of both power assemblies and back off all adjusting screws at least two turns. At both power assemblies, remove the rocker arm shaft nuts, washers, and rocker arm shaft caps. Place removed parts into the designated container. Remove both rocker arm assemblies and store with the other parts for use during application of the new power assembly. Note, care must be taken to avoid dropping rocker arms during this step. The valve bridge assemblies from both cylinders and rocker arm shaft supports from affected assembly must be removed. A light tap with a hammer may be required to dislodge the rocker arm supports from their locating pins. Place them in the designated container. On engines equipped with mechanical unit injectors, MUI, the removal of the overspeed trip assembly will be required as it usually interferes with the removal of the affected cylinder. Disconnect both sets of injector fuel lines. If equipped with mechanical unit injectors, MUI, remove the fuel line and place in the container. To prevent leakage, care must be taken to avoid bending or twisting the fuel lines. Note, care must be taken not to scratch or nick the spherical seats used on some fuel line ends. If equipped with electronic unit injectors, EUI, disconnect the fuel jumpers from the fuel rail. If equipped with mechanical unit injectors, MUI, the adjusting linkages must be removed by removing the spring retainer 
and the clevis pin from the linkage and injector control shaft. Remove the injector adjusting linkage assemblies and place it in the designated container. If equipped with electronic unit injectors, EUI, disconnect the two solenoid wires with eyelet terminals from the injector and unbolt the cable tie bracket from the head. Ensure the wires are held back in such a manner to be clear of the power assembly. Remove the injector crab nut, spherical washer, and injector crab from both power assemblies. Place all pieces into the designated container. With an injector pry bar, remove the injector from the tapered well in the cylinder head. Avoid injector tip damage or contamination by placing the injectors in an approved injector holder. EMD part number 8431626. At the engine left side, access the basket through the oil pan handhold. Using a spring-loaded basket bolt wrench, EMD part number 8236718, and a ratchet, remove the three lower basket bolts from the fork rod assembly. Using a 7 8 inch socket, ratchet, and extension, remove the upper basket bolts from the inboard basket half and place the basket half and bolts into the designated container. While supporting the lower connecting rod bearing and outboard basket half, loosen and remove the upper basket bolts. Maintain the same relative upright position to prevent dropping the basket or bearing into the oil pan. Remove the basket half and discard the lower bearing shell. Apply the connecting rod positioning clamp, EMD part number 8417881, far enough up on the connecting rod so that the rod does not contact the lower cylinder liner skirt when lifted. On the power assembly to be replaced, use a hydraulic torque machine, tame wrench, to loosen the crab nuts from the crab bolts. Also, crab nuts on the adjacent assemblies must be loosened approximately one quarter turn. Adhere to manufacturer and shop operating and safety procedures. Place the removed nuts, washers, and crabs in the designated container. It is advisable to apply thread protectors, EMD part number 8034600, to the four crab bolts at this time to prevent damage to the threads during removal of the power assembly. Removal of unit assembly containing a fork rod. If the power assembly to be removed is a fork assembly, apply the lifting clamp, EMD part number 8417858, to the rocker arm shaft studs, securing it with the rocker arm shaft nuts and washers. Insert a piston holding tool, EMD part number 8417859, into the injector well, threading it into the piston crown. Using an overhead hoist, raise the rod and piston assembly until the piston is at the top of the liner. Turn the sleeve so that the spring pin in the shaft of the tool will rest in the groove of the sleeve. Lower the holding tool so that the pin engages the groove in the sleeve to lock it in place. Note, care must be exercised to prevent bending of the piston holding tool or damage to the piston. The piston must be pulled up at the correct 22 and a half degree angle. Remove the hoist from the piston holding tool and attach it to the rear eye of the lifting clamp. Using the rear eye in the lifting clamp will position the assembly at the proper angle of 22 and a half degrees for removal. Hoist the power assembly up and out of the engine, guiding it as required, and place the assembly in a suitable storage rack. Additional barring of the engine in the normal direction of operation, approximately 120 degrees, will properly position the blade rod for upper bearing shell removal. Thread the piston holding tool into the threaded hole in the crown of the opposing piston and blade rod assembly. Using an overhead hoist, Raise the piston holding tool to allow removal of the upper connecting rod bearing shell. Remove and discard the upper connecting rod bearing shell and continue to raise and lock the blade rod assembly at the top of the cylinder. Removal of unit assembly containing a blade rod. If the power assembly to be removed is a blade rod, 
The piston and fork rod assembly opposite bank must be first supported to allow blade rod removal. Insert the piston holding tool into the fork rod injector well and thread the tool into the piston crown. With the use of an overhead hoist, raise the fork rod and piston assembly, ensuring that the piston holding tool is not bent. Turn the sleeve so that the spring pin in the shaft of the tool will rest in the groove of the sleeve. Now lower the holding tool so that the pin engages the groove in the sleeve to lock it in place. If an additional piston holding tool is not available, it is recommended that the fork rod support tool, EMD part number 8052958, be used. The tool attaches to the bottom of the fork rod and rests in the oil pan, holding the fork rod. Apply the lifting clamp, EMD part number 8417858, to the rocker arm shaft studs and secure it with the rocker arm shaft nuts and washers. Bar the engine over in the normal direction of operation an additional 120 degrees to properly position the blade rod for removal. Thread the piston holding tool into the threaded hole in the crown of the piston and blade rod assembly. Using an overhead hoist, raise the piston holding tool to allow removal of the upper connecting rod bearing shell. Remove and discard the upper connecting rod bearing shell and continue to raise and lock the blade rod assembly at the top of the cylinder. Remove the hoist from the piston holding tool and attach it to the rear eye of the lifting clamp. Using the rear eye in the lifting clamp will position the assembly at the proper angle of 22 and a half degrees for removal. Hoist the power assembly up and out of the engine, guiding it as required